side. I'm so glad that I'm on his side. Hallelujah to Jesus. Because he never fails. He never fails. He never fails. I don't care what the problem is. I don't care what the situation is. I don't care if the trouble got you backed against the wall. God's got your back. God's got you covered. He'll never leave you and never forsake you. He'll never leave you and never forsake you. Somebody, come on. He'll never, 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 never leave you. A friend that sticks closer than any brother, he'll never, never leave you. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. I know we all got it. Hallelujah, Jesus. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be praised. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Come on, we give you. We Somebody to stretch for him. We give you all. We give you all. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Come on, let's just flow. Come on. We give you all. We give you all. Zion, let's lift him. Say, you are worthy. You are worthy to be praised. Oh, Lord, you are worthy. You are worthy to be praised. Come on, praise him. Come on and worship him. Praise him like the battle is already over. Praise them like the trouble is already past. Praise them like you know it ain't going to last always. Come on, somebody. Praise them like you know that the better days are coming. Better days are here. Hallelujah to Jesus. Whatever the struggle is, whatever the situation is, I'm praising them in advance because I know it ain't going to last always. It ain't going to last always. Can I get somebody to join me and praise him? Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Trouble don't last always. We're going to go back with you. How many know that trouble don't last always? If you know it don't last always, come on, wave your hand in the house this morning. I'm so, I'm so glad. Hey, trouble don't Stop. 
life I know he'll be there You believe that trouble's gonna be over. My faith tells me that if I just keep on trusting God, then I'm gonna see the greater days. Come on, Zion, set trouble, don't lie. Trouble don't last no way. Yeah, no, no. no, no, no.
Weeping man. Weeping man. For the night. them songs from the 90s. Hallelujah to Jesus. We thank you, Lord. And we know that as long as we trusted in the Lord, it takes a lot of faith to look in the face of trouble and be in the middle of a situation and say, this ain't gonna last. I know what the doctor said. I know what the credit report looks like. I know what the troubles on the job are giving you. I, I I can imagine, but as long as I have faith the size of a mustard seed and my faith that tells me that my life is in his hands and that he only wants the best for me. How many know that that's the promise of the Lord? That he wants to see us prosper as our soul prospers. So for that, I turn my life over to him. I don't worry about it. I don't try to fix it. I don't try to make it all work all by my own will. But I get down on my knees and I said, Lord, you made this whole thing. I need you to help me work it out. Help me to be patient, God. Help me to see your will and your way, God. Help me to make the right decisions for our life, God. Hallelujah. Because if I want to know the plans for me, I have to go to the architect, the engineer, because he, he knew me even before I was born. And he said, this is the path that I've assigned for you. So, no, I want you to know that your life is in the master's hands. How many know that your life is in the master's hands? Come on, say. You don't have to worry. And don't you be afraid. And don't you be afraid. Joy comes in the morning. Joy comes in. We already told you trouble don't last no way. For there's a friend, For there's a friend in Jesus who will wipe your tears who away. Will wipe your tears away. And if your heart is broken, come on, Zion, let's lift up. Oh, I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. No matter what, make up my will. My life is in your hands. With Jesus, Jesus, I can take it. With Him, I know I can stand. Back to the top. You don't have to. Don't have to worry. And don't you be afraid. He's 
not giving us the spirit of fear. Troubles they don't lie. For there's a friend in Jesus who will wipe your tears away. And if your heart is broken, just lift your hands and say, Come on, come on, kingdom. Oh, I know. Get you down. They seem to get you down. And all your friends and loved ones, the ones that you counted on, they're nowhere to be found. Remember, remember there's a friend in Jesus. The friend we have in Jesus. Who will wipe your tears away. And if your heart's been broken. Just lift your hands. and surrender. Come on, everybody all over the temple this morning. Whatever the issues are, I just surrender it here, here, here. Give it to him. Come on, let him hear your surrender. Come on, the sound of the surrender. I give it to you. I Hallelujah to Jesus. Come on, everything I have, I'm leaning on him. I'm trusting in him. Trust thou in the Lord. Woo! This life, my family's life, my entire household's life, I'm placing it in the hands of the master. Hallelujah to Jesus. My life.
time huh? Hallelujah. Praise God. I surrender. I surrender all. Bless the Lord. At this time, we're going to get ready to go before the throne of grace. And we ask you, who are able to stand, if you stand for the reverence, a prayer, and the reading of God's holy word. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, let us look at, let us look into the Lord. O oh, gracious heavenly Father, as we come before you on this day, Lord Jesus, we ask you, God, right now, to touch each and every one of us in a mighty and miraculous miraculous way. Again, we of ourselves can do nothing, but we look unto you, who is the author and finisher of our faith. We ask you, God, right now to let your mercy, let your tender mercies, oh God, right now. We, we ask you, God, right now to bless us, oh God. Hold us, oh God, in the palm of your hands. Lord, we know that we live in a world full of violence, hatred, upheavals. But again, you've not given us the spirit of fear, but our power of love and a strong mind. We ask you, God, right now to let your Shekinah glory dwell among the midst of your people. We ask you, Father, to bless GRTDC Washington as you've never before. We ask you, Heavenly Father, right now to touch the shepherd of this flock, O oh God, as he continue to lead us, nourish us, and feed us with your everlasting words. We ask you right now, Heavenly Father, to touch those who are sick and afflicted in their bodies. Touch those who are in the hospitals. Touch that broken home. Touch that troubled marriage. We ask you, God, right now to grip a hold of that financial situations where there seem that there may be no way out. But we know, oh God, for in you we cast our cares. For you tell us to cast our cares upon you, 
for you careth for us. For your yoke is easy and your burden is light. And for this, we just want to say thank you. We just we don't say thank you, O oh God, on this morning, O oh God. And Lord Jesus, and even if you never do anything else for us, Lord, you've already done enough. And for this, we glorify you. We magnify you. We lift you up in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. We ask you to remain standing. And our scripture is coming out of the New, New Testament, St. John, the 14th chapter, beginning at verse 1. Again, it's the New Testament, St. John, the 14th chapter, beginning at verse 1. Okay, and it reads as follows. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God? Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Bless the Lord for the reading of his holy word. And it says, no man cometh to the Father but by me. And we used to close it out with the old hymn saying, one, one, one. One way to God, baptized in Jesus' name. Bless the Lord for the reading of his holy word. Worship the Lord this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. In the beauty of holiness.
on, kingdom. Let's just worship the Lord this morning. Come on, I need everybody's hands lifted this morning. Come on, let's, let's lift our hands in unity. In unity. Your majesty, your majesty. We're honoring our King, our Lord, and his name is Jesus, your majesty. Tap in. Let's worship. Come on, let them hear your heart this morning. Your Majesty. God, we come and we honor you this morning with our praise. Word tells us he's seeking true worshipers, those who worship him in spirit and truth. Lord, this is your place. This is your opportunity. Come on, let's worship him. Worship him. Lord, to him alone who sits on the throne, your majesty. Lord, Word says, now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. Be all glory, be all honor, be all majesty, be all power. Sweep through this temple with your glory. Let his glory fill the temple. service where we welcome all of our first-time visitors virtually as well as here in the temple. If there are any first-time visitors, we ask that you please stand. Amen. Let's give our first-time visitors a hand. Come on, we can do better than that. Let's give our first-time visitors a hand. On behalf of our pastor, Bishop William Michael Fields, and our assistant pastor, Elder Ronald Young, and the entire Greater Refuge Temple family, we welcome you. We ask, if you do not have a church home, that you would consider Greater Refuge Temple as your place of worship. Thank you. Have a great day. Everybody say welcome. Oh! 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord again. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Praise him again. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Once again, we say welcome in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. At this time, this is the part of the service that everyone can participate in. It's offering time in the temple. Hallelujah. As our deacons assemble themselves and as our tech team uh, allows uh, the various ways to give on the screen for those that's live streaming, I ask that you go into your places of money. Hallelujah, hallelujah, to be a blessing to the house of God. Please stand, all those that's able to stand in Jesus' name. We also have electronic giving in the, in the social hall as well. Let us look to the Lord. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord, thanking you, Lord. Lord, you being the giver of life, Lord, we ask right now, Father God, that you bless this offering. Lord, bless those that have to give, those that have not, Lord. Bless them to be able to give next time. Lord, we ask that you just move in this place, Lord Jesus. Oh, bless this seed in the sower, Lord Jesus. Lord, we ask that you use it for the upbuilding of your kingdom, Lord, that you be glorified through it. Lord, we ask that you open up the windows of heaven, Lord, and pour us out a blessing which we have not enough room to receive. Lord, do it, and we'll so be so grateful and thankful in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I ask that you turn to the walls and you are now in the hands of the usher in Jesus' name.
Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord for your giving in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. At this time, it's that time of the service. Hallelujah. The sacred time. The word of God. Hallelujah. How many came to hear the word of God? Hey, glory. Hallelujah. At this time, I'm not going to delay. It's our own pastor, Bishop W. Michael Fields. Give God praise as he come in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Bless you. Let's give Jesus some praise this morning. Come on, give him glory. And praise him like you love him. Praise him like you love him. Yes. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Just lift your hands quickly and tell the Lord thank you. He's been good to you. Hallelujah. He's been good to you. I say he's been good to you. Yeah. Some of you look like you don't believe that, but if you believe it, open your mouth and say, he's been good to me. Now put those hands together. Give Jesus some more praise. Yeah. He is worthy to be praised. We say praise the Lord again to all of you who are here and to those of you who have connected with us via live stream, we say praise the Lord. He is worthy of the praise. He has blessed us to be here for another time and to worship him, understanding that had it not been for the Lord who was on our side, none of us would be here today. I'm grateful. Look at somebody, tell them I'm glad to be in the Lord's house. Yeah, could have been in the crack house, yeah, the nut house, but I'm in God's house because of his goodness and his mercy, I'm here. Even those of you who have connected with us, had it not been for the Lord, you wouldn't be here. But God's grace and mercy has allowed you to see this day. We honor the Lord Jesus Christ because he is the boss. And uh, to our assistant pastor, uh, Elder Young, Lady Young, and to, uh, and to all of the deacons and to our mothers and missionaries and to all of you here in this house, we honor you. Turn with me, won't you, to the book of Romans, a familiar passage of scripture. Romans, the eighth chapter. Romans, the eighth chapter. Romans, the eighth chapter. Oh, Father, we bless your holy name. We, we're so grateful, truly grateful for your goodness, your grace, and for your mercy. We, we made it through last week only because of you. You know, even the struggles and the battles some of us had, but. You didn't let it overwhelm us. You, you kept our hearts and minds. So we don't take it for granted, Lord. It is a privilege to be in your house, to be in your presence, still in our right mind, still, oh God, with the determination to worship you. And we ask now that you would bless us through your word. Send it with power and demonstration of your Holy Spirit. Touch us. Even those who are sitting in their living room, some in their cars, some in the office who will have connected with us, I pray that everything you do here, you'll do there for them. In Jesus' name. Say it with me. In Jesus' name. Amen. One verse. Verse number 37, Romans 8 and 37. Let's read it together in concert. You have it, say amen. amen. Let's read. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Read it again. Nay. Mm. 
Read it one more time. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word, sanctified in our hearts, that we may grow thereby. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Before you sit down, tell somebody these words, welcome to the winner's circle. I need to begin this sermon by saying that it's really important that you remember who you are in God. I mean who you are in God. I didn't say what church you go to. I did not say who your pastor is. It's good to know all of that and to have pride in where you worship and who your pastor is, but that won't help you through the difficulties of life when you have to sort of fend for yourself, as they say. Because, and you've heard me say it many times, because you don't live in this building. You don't live in the prayer room. You have to walk this walk every day. And it's not always easy. Look at somebody and say, it's not always easy. Mm -hmm. And you've heard me say it many times, because there are those who watch us worship and watch us praise who erroneously feel that because we're acting like this, that everything is easy for us. But that's not true. Most of us, if not all of us, are praising God in spite of. Well, and perhaps uh, it's better that way because if you're the kind of individual who can only praise God when the sun shines, or when you feel good, then I dare say you really don't understand the goodness of God because even in your difficult moments, had it not been for the Lord, you would not have made it through what you went through. So I understand more fervently why David said, I will bless him not sometimes, not once in a while, not once a week, but I will bless him at all times hallelujah the enemy of course would want us to feel as though god doesn't love us because of what we go through or because god is not who he says he is because he allows certain things to happen in our lives but those of us who walk with him have this understanding and we had to learn this that his ways are not our ways and what we go through, he uses actually to bring us closer to him. What if he was the kind of God, like some of us have parented, we give them everything. And we never teach the child that these things don't come easy. Hallelujah. You know, mama used to say money don't grow on trees. But uh, it would seem as though if God parented us like this, then we would expect God to just drop everything and anything in our laps, and we would never be concerned about how we can please him. My job is not to beg God for everything, but to seek his will and, hallelujah, to follow his word. And he says to me, there's no good thing that I will withhold from you if you walk up rightly before me. So it is, hallelujah, appropriate for me then to just walk as he says walk and to trust him. I've been talking about trusting God for a while. And it is by faith that we receive the fullness, the full thrust of who God is, what God can do, and where he wants to take us. Can I get an amen? So it's important to know, hallelujah, who he is. And then for me to have a proper understanding of who I am in him and what his word says concerning me. I believe this is why Pastor Paul wrote, hallelujah, the book of Romans. It is a doctrinal book. It contains 
the ABCs, some say, of Christian education. It is by far the longest theological and most influential epistle that Paul writes, and the theme is the righteousness of God being revealed. It is revealed through how we live, by how we follow his instruction. And he speaks to us also concerning the fact that we are free now from guilt and from sin. It was important for him to do this because, uh, hallelujah, there were many who were taunting, teasing, even being abrasive towards those who had given their lives to Christ. And there were those who were upset towards that reality because it would seem impossible to those who don't have faith to believe that your life can change after meeting Jesus. You know, you'll hear conversations like, child, I don't believe you don't do this anymore. And they'll try to remind you of how good it was out there when you were doing all that stuff and now you don't have a desire to do it anymore because you met Jesus. Look at somebody and say, because I met Jesus. They had difficulty understanding or even appreciating the change in their life and, hallelujah, even the fact that the, Paul wants them to understand that there'll be days even when you talk to yourself concerning how you used to be. Hallelujah. And sometimes you'll feel bad about things that God has already forgiven you for. And he says these words, there is therefore now no condemnation. Hallelujah. I've been forgiven. Somebody in the house, you need to lift your hands and remind yourself, I've been forgiven. Yes, and the old me has been washed in the blood. So he reminds them in his writings that you are saved now by grace through faith. Hallelujah. Faith that has brought you to a place of salvation. And because he did not want them to get swelling of the head, he wanted them to understand even the faith that you have, God had to give that to you. He had to bring you to the realization that the only way you can change, the only way you can live better is to believe first that he is God and then that he is a rewarder to those that diligently seek him. So he reminds them, you're saved now and it was by the grace of God he could have left you in your sins. He could have left you in your dilemma. Hallelujah. But he saved you through faith and because of this you ought to have a desire to grow, hallelujah, develop, mature, be more and more as he wants you to become. You had to have faith to receive, and that same faith you use to receive him, you have to use to hold on to him, hallelujah. This is why Paul writes on another occasion, he says, this is why you should examine yourselves to see whether you're still in the faith. He says these words, test yourselves. Uh, hallelujah. Do you not realize this about yourselves, that Jesus Christ is in you, unless indeed you fail to meet the test? Paul was challenging them not to run from life and not to use the troubles of life as an excuse to give up on God. It would seem that every church he pastored, wherever there are people, there are always questions and situations, and there's always a possibility for those to let go of their faith because they don't like what they're going through at that particular time. But he wants them to understand that faith has to be consistent. You can't trust him on Monday and be 
because you don't like how Tuesday is going, you can't skip over Tuesday and say, I'll trust you on Wednesday. You have to believe every day. Hallelujah. Just look at your neighbor say, it's an everyday faith. Hallelujah. So he said, meet the test. Hallelujah. Go through whatever you have to go through. It should not matter if you really believe in your God. Hallelujah. So remember your salvation. Remember you're saved. Remember he saved you. Remember you're a child of God. Remember, hallelujah, that it takes trusting him if you want to see how things are going to come out you've got to stick around you you can't walk away from this you in order to pass the test you have to take the test and uh, hallelujah you just can't be a Sunday morning bench warmer you have to be willing to serve him hallelujah in any capacity hallelujah some of y'all been warming the bench for years years and uh, you don't want to go through anything for God hallelujah but you have to make up your mind right now that uh, in order to receive all God has for me I've got to be willing to be tested and tried hallelujah look at somebody and say you got to show up for the test and so Paul teaches the congregation concerning their faith. Believe. Trust him. You trusted him to save you. Now trust him to keep you saved. And you've got to work out your own soul salvation with faith fear and trembling all through his ministry though he would elaborate more and more on faith hallelujah even the other apostles will tune in hallelujah and teach on the concept of the reality of faith one writer said and he would repeat Old Testament verbiage and say the just shall live by faith. Hmm. But the word of God describes different kinds of faith. There, there are counterfeit forms of faith out there. So uh, James, if he was here, he would stand up and talk to us about what he called dead faith. He informs us that faith without works is dead dead. In other words, he would challenge us refuge and say, is your faith real? Because if your faith is real, it will produce fruits. Mm. Hallelujah. Real faith will produce real, genuine fruits. Hallelujah. When you have real faith, no one has to motivate you to praise God. And hallelujah because praise is produced by real faith even when you're sick because I really believe even when my body is aching a praise is coming out of my mouth hallelujah so he says those of us who really have faith here is the fruit that is produced by those who really believe their God hallelujah you're unselfish you don't speak cruel words to other people and you are sensitive to the problems of others hallelujah real faith look down your row and say my faith is alive Hallelujah, because I still love him on a bad day. And I still worship when I'm having a bad day. And I won't take my pain out on my neighbor because I understand this is my test so I can't abuse you because I'm feeling bad today 
Look at somebody and say, I'm going through. But I refuse to take it out on you. I'm trusting God. I'll be all right in a little while. As a matter of fact, I have enough faith to believe before I leave this house. Before the benediction, I'll feel so much better. And then James would move further and talk about there's also a demonic faith. And he teaches that even demons believe and shudder at the name of Jesus. That's because demonic faith is only an intellectual concept. Hallelujah. Demons have no doubt that Jesus is the son of the living God. But they rebelliously choose to serve a different master. Hallelujah. And so it is. They know just like we know. Hallelujah. They are theologically sound. They can quote scriptures like we quote scriptures. Yes, they can. The Bible says even Satan can transform himself into an angel of light. Hallelujah. But I submit to you, my brother, my sister, that if all you have is an intellectual faith, you really don't have real faith. Knowing all the answers and possessing the right theology doesn't save you. You have to have a relationship and experience. You've got to be able to know that he's within you. Hallelujah. Because he said having the seal, he knows those that are his. Hallelujah. So in order to have real faith I've got to have more than a book knowledge Paul said that I may know him in uh, the fellowship of his suffering and within the power of his resurrection how many of you know God if I didn't have a bible I still know him if I never heard a scripture I still know him I can feel him in my hands and in my feet he, he walks with me he, he talks with me and he tells me that I am his own look at somebody and say I really know him and uh, I didn't say I know everything about him uh, because he's the ancient of days he, he's the beginning, the end he was before the foundations of the world were laid uh, I would have to live a million lifetimes to know everything about him but everything I do know uh, it's because he's living on the inside Help me. I know he's a healer, not because of what I read, but because of what he's done in my I know he can keep your mind because I was there, I was there, I was there. I was troubled and he gave me peace. Oh, some of y'all don't understand because you don't really know him like that, but if you know him stream down the old road and say yeah I know him I know him I know him and, uh, and, and then there's what you call vain faith and uh, that's when Jesus says not everyone that says uh, Jesus is Lord of their lives uh, will be able to enter into the kingdom of heaven uh, when he returns uh, because real faith is obedient to God uh, when you really have faith you'll say yes to his will yes uh, to his way so uh, only those who actually do the will of God will be permitted uh, to have entrance in uh, hallelujah to the kingdom so I submit to those of you who simply responded to an altar call and uh, all you did was say the 
sinner's prayer religiously tithe it takes more than that in order for you to really have entrance and access to the things of God you got to have what's called saving faith hallelujah remember we quote it all the time God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and whosoever believes on him you won't perish but I'll give you everlasting life he sent his son and his son gave his life and then after he gave his life he rose again uh, what I just gave you was a summary of the gospel <laughs> living he loved me <laughs> dying he saved me buried he carried my sins far away and rising he, he justified and uh, he freed me forever one day look at someone and say one day he's He's going to come back on that glorious day. Hallelujah. He filled us. How many of you have the Holy Ghost abiding on the inside? Hallelujah. Look at someone and say, I have a saving faith. And because of this, I can supernaturally produce good fruit, good works. And there is evidence that I'm no longer who I used to be. Hallelujah. So you won't see me in here speaking in tongues and then in the parking lot cursing somebody out because I'm saved. Oh, y'all don't want to hear this because that's what you do. But look at somebody say the thing I used to do I don't do no more it don't mean I don't want to it don't mean that I make don't make mistakes but I got saving faith and the same altar I went to to get saved that's where I go so I can stay saved hallelujah and he saved me because he loves me thank you father tell somebody he saved me because he loved me he loves me and I need to remember that even now after I have salvation that he loves me some of you going through right now and the devil's got you in his clenches and you need to simply raise your voice and say oh no I know God loves me I'm going through this but he didn't leave me I'm having troubles but he's still with me he loves me I'm not going to ask you to touch your neighbor now I need you to touch your own self and say he loves me I'm trying to help somebody today because somebody in here and somebody sitting in your living room the enemy is trying to make you feel like you can't make it anymore or that you want to give up or perhaps you're not where you used to be but you need to encourage yourself and say God loves me yeah. Hallelujah. That's what knowing that he loves you. That's what it does for you. It, it 
gives you strength. I'm going through him, but I'm going to lay hands on myself. Come on, do it sitting in the living room on your couch. Lift your hands and say, God loves me. Hallelujah. God's love gives us strength. Don't you remember what the word says? The Lord is my strength and song. And he has become my salvation. He's my God. And I will praise him, my father's God. And I will exalt him. And the second thing his love does for us. It gives us confidence. Hallelujah. God's love. Come on, say it with me. God's love gives me confidence. I hear the word of the Lord say in the book of Proverbs, for the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. And the third thing I need to bring out about knowing that he loves us is that he comforts us when we are fearful. That's why David said the Lord is my light. I feel my health and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor. Say God's love comforts me when I'm fearful. And he reminds me I didn't give you the spirit of fear but I gave you love power and a sound mind so as we walk this walk we walk by faith and not by sight and we are where we are and we are who we are because he loves us us. Hallelujah. Make it personal. Lift up your hands and say, he loves me. And because he loves me, he won't let me fall. He won't leave me by myself. All I've got to do is continue to walk in him. Continue to trust him. Hallelujah. And I stood up here to tell you then the result of all of that has to be greater faith. Look at someone to say greater faith. If I walk trusting, if I, if I walk praising, if I, if I walk having faith in him, then I have no other choice than to produce greater faith. It's a result of being saved. Truly saved. Living all I know how to live. Greater faith. Scream down your row and say greater faith is coming your way. Now you gotta be careful when you repeat everything the preacher tells you to say because the only way to receive greater faith hallelujah is to have more challenges testing and trials remember oh God I feel this where he said the trying of your faith will work patience 
Remember when he said, think it not strange when you find yourselves in divers temptations and tribulations. He said, the trying of your faith. So I don't care how much you shout. You're going to have to go through in order to receive a greater faith. That's why Paul begins the 8th chapter with instruction. He says, I long to see you so I can impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end that you would be established. That is, that I may be comforted together with you by this mutual faith both of you and of me. He's incorporating himself in the instruction and he's letting them know that I wish I could be with you right now so we could both be comforted together because I don't want you to think just because I'm preaching to you about faith that the preacher don't have to go through I've got to go through just like everybody else but what I can say is he has no respect of person baby if he healed her he'll get up from there and he'll heal somebody on the other side if he brought me out he'll bring you out too scream down your row and tell somebody God's got a blessing for everybody hallelujah all we need is now faith never mind what happened yesterday if you trust him right now I'll show you something hallelujah tell somebody else before I finish this tell them he's got a blessing for everybody so he gives them instruction and he consoles them and he lets them no, it's not supposed to be hallelujah easy all the time. God never promised us a rose garden. He said, though, low, I'm with you always. I'm going to be there. And I'm going to use the rough stuff. I'm going to use the bruises and the bumps. I'm going to use the hard times you had to bring you closer to me. I'm going to bring you from faith to faith. I'm going to make you stronger. Thank you, Lord. Some of you can already testify to somebody right now and tell them I'm not the same person I was. Hallelujah, that I was yesterday. I'm a little closer now. My prayer isn't even the same. My praise is different than it was when I first got saved. Because I know him better. I'm a little closer now. He used the pain to give me power. He used the quenching and he used every scrape to bring me a little higher. And that's why Paul said all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. And for those who have been called according to his purpose. I know you're going through, but it's working together for your good. I know what the doctor said, but it's working together. I know you got a limp. I know you don't feel good on 
the inside. But it's working together, together, together. I'm going to sew it all together. And I'm going to remove your garment of mourning. And I'm going to give you a garment of praise. That's what I've been doing with your tears. And with your troubles. I'm making you a new suit. Hallelujah. You've been wearing doubt. I feel the Holy Ghost. You've been wearing burden. But if you believe in me, the same God that saved you, I can bring about a change. And I'll let you change your clothes right here. Give me your burden. And I'll give you a garment of praise. Give me that sickness. And I'll give you a garment of praise. Give me that weight. And I'll give you a garment of praise. That's what worship is all about. It's an exchange. I gave him my burden. And he lifted me. And he gave me a garment of praise. Hallelujah. I see in the spirit that your garment is ready for you right now. While you were praising God. I sent an angel. And he laid the garment right next to you. All you got to do by faith is remove the pain. Take it off right now. And reach over and get your garment. And put it on your shoulder. And tell the devil all things. Work together for my good. You meant it for evil. But God turn it around. Say yeah. Say yeah. Can we have church in here? Get up on your feet. And turn around. And say out of your mouth. He turned it around. I came in here one way, but I'm leaving another way. I feel this in my spirit. All things, all things, all things are going to have challenges in my life. Hallelujah. But Paul wanted them to know that no matter what you go through, the end result has to be victory. That's why he told the Corinthians, we're troubled on every side. Can I preach in here? But not distress. Hey, God, we are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Lean on your neighbor and say, that's all right. I know you've been through, but that's all right. Hallelujah. Because you already got the victory. The devil is a liar. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put all of y'all on the welcoming committee. I want you to go to two people and say, I know you've been through, but I want to welcome you to the winner's circle. Oh, I feel this. Come on, say it out of your mouth. I know you've been going through, but I see victory for you. Welcome to the winner's circle. You can't have victory without a struggle. You can't have healing without a sickness. You can't have light without darkness. Shut up. 
Welcome to the winning circle. And when you come out, you're going to come out with victory. Say yeah. Victory. Thank you, Lord. As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. I'm going to go through because I'm blessed. I'm going to go through because I'm saved. But nay, nay, I feel like preaching in here. Nay, nay, and all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Go around and touch two people and say nay, nay. In all these things, you're more, you're more than a conqueror. Honey, you ain't just a winner. You're more than a winner. Why? Because I serve a God that can work it out for me. I serve a God that understands my pain. I serve a God. He walks with me. He talks with me. And he tells me I'm his own. Go find one more person. And say welcome, welcome. Welcome to the winner's circle. Hallelujah. If you made it through and you're here right now, you're in the winner's circle. If you've been through hell, tears at night, but you're still here, you're in the winner's circle. Doctor said you were going to die, but God said, I'm going to heal you. You're in the winner's circle. You ought to praise him. Stop looking like a loser and praise him like a conqueror. Lift up your head. Oh, ye gates, and be ye lifted up. Ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. High five, three people. Tell them I'm more than a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror. Tell somebody I know who I am. I'm not a loser. I'm a winner. I know who I am. Hallelujah. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above only and not beneath. Shake somebody's hand. Come on, shake it, shake it. Pull on them a little bit and say, I know whom I believe and I'm fully persuaded that is able to keep me from falling I know who I am I am complete in him I know who I am come on say it out of your mouth say I know who I am I'm alive with Christ hallelujah say it out of your mouth I know who I am I'm born of God I'm a child of the king I'm a royal 
royal priesthood. I'm a chosen generation. I've got power in my life. I got anointing hovering over me. I got the blood of Jesus. Say it out of your mouth. I know who I am. Lift up your hand and say I'm holy. Oh yes I am. I'm holy. Yes I am. I'm just like my daddy. I'm holy. Tell somebody I know who I am. And I have the mind of Christ. Say it. Let everybody know. I know who I am. I have the peace of God. That passes all understanding. I'm not going to lose my mind. I'm not going to let go. Because I know who I am. I'm in the winner's circle. I might bleed a little bit, but I'm in the winner's circle. I've been wounded. I've gone through, but I'm here. And I came with a praise. You don't know my story, but I got a praise. Hallelujah. I dare you to talk to one more person and say, I'm in the winner's circle. Yeah. And it took me a while to get here. I've been lying on. Oh, yeah. I've been sick in my body. I've been betrayed. I've been all kinds of things. But the Lord was faithful. And he brought me here. And if you think I'm just going to sit here and look around the room, the devil is a liar. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out. 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 Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I can't hear you. Praise God. Praise God. I can't hear you. Praise God. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, go tell one more person. Uh, and after you tell them, I want you to break out with a praise. Uh, walk over to one more person uh, and say, Welcome uh, to the winner's circle. Uh, those of you who have connected with us, put it in the comment section. I'm in the winner's circle. Now come on and praise him. Come on and give him glory. Yeah. Yeah.
everybody clap those hands. Let me hear those hands. The anointing is flowing richly in this place. And I want you to get whatever God has for you right here, right now. But I want to show you that no one has to lay hands on you. All you have to do is believe, trust God, and you can get what you need right now. If you understand what I just said, make your way to this altar. Just lay your hand on the altar and trust God. Yeah, yeah. Take your time as long as you get here. Don't rush. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, double move shot. And before you walk away from the altar, Say it out of your mouth. I'm in the winner's circle. I wasn't supposed to make it this far. But I'm in the winner's circle. Thank him for doing it. Thank him for the healing. But don't forget to let him know where you are. I'm in the winner's circle. I didn't lose my mind. Oh, oh. The devil didn't do what he thought he was going to do. I'm in the winner's circle. Oh, God. It is the most sun that I do. Take your time. Take your time and get here. And you better say it out of your mouth. I've been through, but I'm in the winner's circle. You for healing thank you for deliverance but I know who I am thank you I'm in the witness A dance in the house. Yay! Come.
Don't you hold back on your praise. Give it all to him. Don't you hold back on your hallelujah. Give it all to him. Those of you who have connected with us via live stream, I want to take a moment and minister to you. You have a special need of prayer. Put your name in the comment section so we could establish an electronic prayer line. Whoever you are, whatever you're going through, hallelujah. Because of God's grace, faith in him. Because of the salvation he provides, you too can arrive in the winner's circle. You want us to pray for you, come. Put your name in the comment section. Anyone connected with you in your family that you want us to pray for, put their name there. Tag them even. Let them know that the saints of God here at Greater Refuge Temple in D.C. are getting ready to pray for you. We'll give you time. Hallelujah. Praying for the prior family. Praying for Wilcox, Becky Wilcox. Hallelujah. We'll wait on you. The Hall and Walker family. The Paynes and Hawkins family. We're praying for you. Caleb Harris, the Williams family, we're praying for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Dempsey family, we're praying for you. The Bennett family, we're praying for you. Sister Gloria Butler, Anthony Harris Williams, the Williams family, Sandra Penny, we're praying for you. Deacon Brian Basil and the Basil family, we're praying for you. The Dorsey family, we're praying for you. And the names are still coming in. Let's bow our heads. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we know that you're a God that does all things well. You understand our pain and anguish, and there's no situation that you're not able to help us with. We pray to you because you are God and above you there is no other. Every name that's been called and even the names that are still coming in. You know the address. You know what room they're sitting in. You know the situation. Father, step into that space. Hallelujah. Right where he is. Right where she is. Sitting next to her on that couch. Lay your hand upon a minister to our heart. Touch his body. Whatever is needed, we know that you're a God that can and will supply. We pray in faith, knowing that you'll do abundantly, exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. And we count it done. <laughs> in Jesus' name. Say it with me in Jesus' name. Everybody right where you are, put those hands together. Give Jesus some praise. Come on and give him glory. 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 Is there anyone here you want to be baptized into that wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ? Come. You want to give your life to the Lord. You want to be baptized in Jesus' name. We'll baptize you now. Today is the day of your salvation. And the day that you hear my voice, harden not your heart. 
to have won. You have not received the gift of the Holy Ghost. And you want to be filled with the Spirit. Come. Come. Even those of you who have joined us via live stream, you want to be baptized, send us an email. Admin at grtdc.org. Someone will reach out to you. Yes. You want to be baptized. You want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Come. Today is the day of your salvation. Seek him while he's still being found. Knock while he's still answering. God bless you, Pastor Fields here, and I want to share my joy with you. I am joyful, I am glad always to be able to worship with you Sunday after Sunday. Many of you have faithfully connected with us. Lady Fields and I talk about it always, how the people of God all over this world are taking the time to connect with Greater Refuge Temple here in our nation's capital. In our virtual sanctuary, worshiping God, praising Him in the beauty of holiness. And we'd like you to continue to connect with us. I believe God has something just for you. This is the church that's been chosen by Jesus Christ for the blessings of multitudes. And we intend to fulfill that mandate, preaching and teaching and ministering the gospel of Jesus Christ. Won't you continue to join us? If you don't have a church home, why don't you make Greater Refuge Temple your church home? Send in a request for membership or baptism or prayer. Whatever it is that you need, we're here to serve you. Admin at grtdc.org. The Lord bless you and keep you. And we look forward to fellowshipping with you on next week. Shalom, shalom.